You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Are you? A calm and reasonable person. This champion is just absolutely nasty. He's just giving infinite back shots left and right. He's just taking his fist and just dropping the god hand everywhere. His god hands are rated E for everybody. He's like Oprah with a god hand. You get a back shot. You Bruh. get a back shot. He's just punching people in the back all the time. Sun Wukong can get a back shot. Tuanara can get the back shot. Cupidus can get it. Lydia can get it. It's equal opportunity. Men, women, demons. It doesn't matter. He'll fist everybody. Thank you for 307 subs. Go over his kit real quick. His A1 hits twice so really great against somebody like rotos who has a passive that prevents him from dying in one shot it also has a chance to place decreased attack each critical hit also fills the turn meter of all allies by five percent he's an hp based what? champion the nice thing is that he is very tanky but the downside to that is there's no increased hp i'm popping in real quick i realized i didn't explain it well enough in damn, raid damn, there damn, is damn. no increase hp buffs currently so there's no way to increase taurus's damage output aside from extra buffs on his a3 like with ronda for an example you can place increased attack so she can do more damage or harima you can place increased defense to do more damage but you can't do increased hp for more damage I mean, there is with Rotus with his A2. That's like a very specific case. However, for Taurus, there's not going to be any buffs to increase his health yet. Attacks one enemy, places a stun debuff for two turns, deals double damage to enemies whose attack is equal to or higher than this champion's attack. You still need accuracy for that. I don't really have my Taurus built with high accuracy. Wow. You want to build him with a low amount of attack. Practically no attack if you can make it that way. And then his passive effect, which only applies if oh, Marishka hi. is on the team. I don't have Marishka. Marishka, I wish I did. Whenever an enemy attacks Marishka, attack that enemy using this skill, which is absolutely insane. It's extremely annoying on top of that. So you need to have somebody like Ramantu to place block passives. Or Rhonda is another great champion who can take down Taurus with her A2 block active and passive skills. That's another login champion that you guys could use to go up against Taurus. His God Hand constant pressure A3 a damage increases by 15% for each buff on allies. Initially, I thought, oh, it's just the buffs that are on Taurus. No, it's the buffs on everybody. That's why you're going to want to have everybody with buffs on. Then increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. That's why also when I was doing the Hydra Infinity comp before we got nerfed, Taurus was one of the champions that I was using to increase the ally buffs. Heals this champion by 5% for every buff that had its duration increased. Again, so the more buffs you have, the more heals. Restores decrease max HP equals to the amount of any surplus heal. Fierce Battler. When attack decreases the enemy's attack by 10% up to 50 against anybody else, or up to only 25% against bosses, places a fear debuff on all enemies from the orcs, ogren, undead hordes, and demon spawn factions at the beginning of each round for one turn debuff cannot be resisted i keep using rotos as an example but he's a great example here candy prince kaimar straight off the rip they're gonna get feared and then his other passive all incoming damage from skills is reduced by 50 percent one attack this champion's max hp will be decreased by 25 percent of the attack's initial damage before the damage reduction not only is he tanky from having a lot of hp and then if you build him with a lot of defense that's another thing 50 percent of somebody's damage being completely reduced is just it's another reason why he's such a coveted champion if you do get blessings for him go ahead and throw a ward of the fallen one counts as an extra buff two it gives you extra hp and crit damage once you get far enough and then it also decreases the damage received so with that all out of the way what you want to do is build him in a savage set or something like a lethal set you want as much ignore damage as you could possibly put. If it were up to me, I'd put him in a savage and cruel set just so I can get that extra 5% of ignoring a champion's defense. In the building process, what I'm looking for is crit damage, HP, and then of course you want to make sure he's crit capped, and then speed. But here are all his pieces of gear if you guys want to go ahead and pause the video take a look at that. We're focusing on crit damage for the gloves, HP percent for the chest. If you can get HP percent on this as well, that would be ideal. For 
the boots, ideally, you would want to have HP percent. The more HP you can get, the better. However, I found that because my Taurus was moving too slow, he wasn't really taking too many turns. So even though he was at over 100,000 HP, wait. if he's not able to take a turn, it doesn't matter how much damage he can do. Because if you're too slow, you're too slow. I found it better to put him in speed boots. For the banner, we're going to be going HP, crit damage for the amulet. And then if we can get more HP anywhere, that's probably where we're going to get the most value. Okay, and here are his masteries. We're taking extra 5% of damage when attacking with full health. So if you're going first, then he's going to be doing more damage because he's going to have his full health as well as the ruthless ambush, giving an extra 8% for each first hit on the enemy. Extra speed every time somebody's killed, with extra crit damage, extra crit rate. And then a 30% chance to decrease the cooldown of a random skill if the damage inflicted exceeds 30%. So Taurus does a lot of damage, so he's going to have a pretty good chance of resetting his skills whenever he does do significant amounts of damage. Wrath of the Slain is going to be increasing even more damage for dead allies. Killstreak, the more people he kills, the more damage he's going to be doing. And then Helm Smasher to do some extra ignore defense. We're going to be taking extra res here because you can never have too much extra resistance. We're going to be decreasing the damage taken whenever he's hit with a critical hit. A little more tankiness. Extra heals whenever he kills somebody, which is going to be pretty much all the time. Delay death to reduce damage even further whenever he's attacked by the same champion and then counterattack masteries because whenever he counterattacks it's one of the best things for you here are the total stats if you can get a hundred thousand more hp on him go ahead and try to do that try to stack him with a lot of defense because it makes him tank here 220 speed is right around where i think he finds the right amount of balance as the damage dealer 200 to 220 in fact i'm thinking about switching him up maybe dropping 20 21 speed and then stacking that into hp so that he does even more damage as you can see I still have a lot of room to improve with my stats. He is shy of 300% crit damage. It's still something that I'm working on. I just don't have the gear in Savage currently or Lethal. You have to understand, if you had him, you would not be saying nerf Taurus. Trust me, we don't need any more nerfs within Raid. So this team you see him in is my arena farming team. Arbiter to speed boost, increase attack. And then we have Kaimar and Yumiko to hit the reset. And Taurus is just going to keep dropping the god hand over and over and over again it's quite satisfying the downside to this specific team is that taurus's god hand does significantly more damage based on the amount of buffs that are on the entire team and even though he can hit really hard and one shot a lot of teams there's not enough buffs for me to optimally use taurus sometimes that is why i use this team right here this is my arena flat pushing team and i'll show you real quick how it works we first outspeed their arbiter and yumiko is going to place cooldowns on the enemy, place some buffs, so there's more buffs all around, and then we're going to trip and place the block active skills as well as the block passives on the opposite team. And now that Taurus has a lot more buffs to use, there's an increase to his damage and he's able to smite everybody. And then here we have a pretty stocky team, a lot of buffs, a lot of damage mitigation, but that's why I have Ramatu. Everything just get, keeps getting stripped and Yumiko will reset. And there we go. And then his A2 is actually pretty bonkers because it just completely smacks. 174 right there. It also places a stun. Pretty handy because there are often times where I go up against other Tauruses and I'm able to place a stun on them. But yeah, it's my most used team. And it's been pretty successful so far. Okay, and this is another team that I like to use. Whenever I go up against somebody that I think is going to outspeed me or place buffs, especially bomb teams, I bring in Cardio. His A2 can remove a bunch of debuffs, but he also places the increased crit damage so that Taurus can do even more damage if need be. Now, I don't think I need to cleanse anything here. I think it's just enough to boom, drop the god hand. Such a beautiful sight that there's more than one way to deal with Taurus nowadays so I don't think the argument to just keep nerfing characters left and right is the answer to everything. I've been hearing nerf 
Fumiko and nerf Trenda because of Hydra reasons. The game doesn't need more nerfs. What they need to do is just introduce other mechanics or maybe other characters to counteract things like Taurus. I can think of some characters who do fairly well against Taurus and one of them is Karato Fox Hunter. I would say that he is a great counter. Rotos. Rotos is an excellent counter to Taurus as well. Burrito. It's easy for you to say it because you've been playing for almost five years and you have him. You're right. But I'm telling you if you had him one of these days you just might get him you will understand where i'm coming from and you won't be on the side that says hey let's nerf tar I, I didn't even get to show you guys like his full power but i'm going to show you there are counters to tars in fact look sun wukong's oh, right no. there he's an excellent counter to tars as well you just shoot him See, now Taurus is out of the picture. Take care of Sun Wukong, and then there. So you see, I didn't get to choose Taurus this time, but I still was able to use Rotos to beat his Taurus and his Sun Wukong. It's all about taking the time to learn characters, learn what they're about, what they do. And once you understand that, you can start finding ways to counteract those certain characters. Don't be afraid to fight them because more often than not, once you fail enough times, you'll eventually start to win because it is only through failure that you're going to learn how to succeed. And I wanted to show you guys this real quick because it's actually kind of cool. So we're placing all of our buffs. Decrease defense and weaken. A few more buffs here. One more right there. And then check this out. Boom, God Hand. Almost 1 million right there. Uh, that's pretty cool, I think. He's pretty coked out almost everywhere. Now in Hydra, he does pretty well as well, keeping up with Rodos. So that's another place that I like to use him. In fact, I think I broke my record. Throwing Taurus in my Hydra team is one of the best decisions that I've made because whether he's doing normal or hard Hydra, he does very well. 